What's up guys, more medic one <clears throat> here. I kind of lost my voice, so, so I apologize about that. <clears throat> we have got a 2016 John Deere X330 for a no start. Now the customer states that uh, this tractor hasn't been started since 2018, so 18, so about three years this lawn tractor has been sitting. I replaced the battery. The battery was completely dead. If we turn the key on. We only have 10 hours. 10 hours on this machine. So without a shadow of a doubt, we're going to know that it's been sitting. So we're going to have a carburetor issue or fuel system issue. Now this gas is probably as old as the machine with only 10 hours on it so it's probably definitely going to have to drain the gas tank and get all that old stale fuel out of here but let's see if we can't just get this thing running without a major overhaul of the fuel system now the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to pop this air filter out of here and i'm going to give the engine just a breath of uh a quick start or some carb spray right in the throat of the carburetor and we're going to see if the engine will fire over and run Using that quick start has its advantages and disadvantages. A lot of people are going to say, well, you're going to blow up the motor because it's not supposed to be using starting fluid. It's not going to hurt it. So what you're doing, you're introducing a fuel source right into the carburetor. And if it runs good on what you've sprayed in the carburetor, that's basically you're doing two or three tests at one time. You're testing to make sure the engine has enough compression to run. You're testing and making sure that the ignition system is working. It seems to run on both cylinders, uh, you know, on the carb spray. So we're good to go there. The next step we're gonna see if the fuel pump is actually, you know, delivering fuel to the carburetor. So we know that the fuel pump is pumping enough fuel by just looking at the flow. There's a spec on these little Makuni uh, fuel pumps on how much pressure they're supposed to put out. But hey, in my experience, if they'll squirt fuel and come out you know, with a good amount of force, then you're probably good to go. All the way from the gas tank to the uh, fuel pump and the gas that is exiting the fuel pump smells halfway fresh so they must have dumped a uh, a fresh tank of gas in this thing before i got it on my bench here so basically what i'm going to do now since we know we have gas getting to the carburetor and the carburetor is not flooding out the next thing i'm going to check is going to be this fuel shutoff solenoid now there is a lot of misconceptions about this little gadget right here. This is a anti-after fire solenoid. This does not shut off the fuel to the carburetor to prevent the carburetor from flooding. The bowl, the float and needle and seat inside this Nikki carburetor is what shuts the fuel off. There's a little plunger in here and whenever you turn the ignition on, it pulls this plunger off of the main jet and allows fuel in for it to run. But whenever you turn the key off, it sends the plunger over the main jet, stops the main jet from getting fuel, thus trying to prevent after fire in the muffler whenever you turn it off. That's all this does. And a lot of times when this thing sits up, guess what? This is the lowest part of the carburetor and the lowest point is where the gum and the uh, contaminants are going to try to form. If this sticks 
in the uh, you know the rest position whenever the ignition is off and the plunger is against the main jet and it sticks in that position it won't start because it's not allowing fuel to get to the carburetor so let's go ahead and pull this off it's just a half inch wrench and one connector here now keep in mind that they assemble these engines before they ever mount them on the tractor and sometimes this fuel solenoid is positioned in a way that you can't get a you know a regular box end wrench on there so this is my setup and it works great so your best friend here is going to just be a little half inch crow's foot and a you know slight extension just get it right there make sure your ratchet is in the reverse position and just give it a twist <clears throat> they'll be stuck sometimes pretty gum good so <clears throat> there we go so, let's go ahead and unscrew this and see what's going on here now you're going to have a little bit of fuel run out Yes, this fuel solenoid is stuck, corroded, gummed up to the point to where it's not retracting whenever you, <clears throat> I can't even push it in, it's so gummed up. Now you can clean these up, but you got to be thorough when you do clean them because if you don't get them all the way clean, they'll go to working for a little while and then they'll stop working again because the gum breaks free. But the absolute best thing to do, in my opinion, would be just to replace it. I'm gonna try to clean this one the best I can, and then we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so I could not get this thing freed up and cleaned up. It is so gummed up. I have a feeling that the uh, the main jet may be in the same shape. We may have to end up taking this carburetor off and give it a cleaning. But what I did, since I'm going to replace this solenoid, all I did was take a pair of side cutters and I cut the pintle off of the end of the solenoid and so that will allow gas to flow to the carburetor. So let's go ahead and give it a crank and see how it will run or if it will run. Alrighty, so I've modified the fuel solenoid until I could get me a new one. So let's choke it and give it a crank. I'm going to choke it with my wrist here. And as you can tell, it will run on choke. But as soon as you take it off choke, it dies out. Okay, so everything's good. The fuel solenoid is not the issue now, it was before. So however, we still have a blockage in this carburetor. Most likely, the, uh, the main jet is stopped up and the idle jets are stopped up because it will not stay running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna pull this fuel solenoid back off so that we can get to the main jet of this carburetor let's just see if we can zoom in and take a peek at this jet as you can tell it is completely clogged up we can attempt to clean this jet you can't clean that you can't clean it from the outside you really need to take this thing apart but we're going to attempt to uh, blow this out with compressed air 
and we're going to uh, blow it out with some carburetor cleaner. Let's just give it a try. main jet didn't do a darn thing it's actually running I mean it's running but it's surging its butt off so we're gonna have to go through the carburetor so let's go ahead and pull that off and I'll show you what you need to clean on these little Nikki carburetors they're a pain in the butt and sometimes they will not take a cleaning you just have to replace them but uh, this carburetor being such a even though it's several years old, it hadn't been run. It's only got 10 hours on it and it's just got a fuel blockage somewhere. So let's dig into it. To remove the carburetor on this V-twin Briggs, we're gonna have to take the bore shroud off. We've gotta take the chopper screen off. It's just, you know, screws that go around here. You don't have to take them all the way out because the blower shroud is notched right here. So just loosen these up, one here, there's one here and one on the front and then on this side of the motor as well. Now to get this air horn off, you have two little hidden screws. Well, not really hidden. I think they're seven millimeter, but if you don't have a seven millimeter, you can take it out with a flat headed screwdriver, one on both sides. Then we should be able to pull the air box off of the carburetor. Nope, it's not a seven gotta be a six <laughs> a seven's too big and a six is too small so quarter inch it is should be able to lift the air horn right up off of there to expose the carburetor As we can tell, this carburetor is held on by a long bolt that goes through a captured nut here. But to be able to get to this head of this bolt, we're going to have to pull this whole manifold off. So we're going to have to remove it from the cylinder head here and here. We're going to disconnect the choke linkage and the throttle linkage. We're going to disconnect the fuel solenoid once again and then it should be free to come off and then we can work on the carburetor. Once you get the intake manifold taken off, you can invert this carburetor upside down and then we can take the air horn nuts off this away. Just an 11 millimeter or 7 sixteenths. Now to get these carburetor studs out, it takes a special inverted uh, Torx bit, but all you have to do, if you don't have that special socket, just spin the two nuts on that you took off and jam those together and you'll be able to remove these studs. Let me show you how. You just <clears throat> jam these two nuts together and it makes a stud puller.
once the carburetor is loose, we can just take it and twist it. And get that choke leakage out of there. See if I can get a better shot of that for y'all. So all you gotta do is just twist it and it comes right out. Now your carburetor is free. Alrighty, so whenever you go to remove these carburetor screws and you get ready to pull this bowl off, be super careful. Sometimes there's a spring in here, sometimes there's not. So just carefully separate this and try not to twist the bowl. Just kind of wiggle it off. And you're going to see the bowl gasket and the fuel inlet gasket O-ring right here. Let's try not to disturb these. If you can leave them in place, that's fine. But if it falls off, that's also fine. I'll show you how to put this thing back together correctly. All right, we're gonna focus on this portion of the carburetor first. Carefully take you a pair of needle nose and we're gonna separate the emulsion tube assembly. Pull it out, and there is your bowl. And then there's the main jet that's probably clogged up. This is pretty nasty. And if we can look, it's even nasty down in here. Look at all that gum and varnish. A lot of times, right in here, this O-ring will swell. That's why this was so tough to, to get out. I would recommend, highly recommend replacing these O-rings, as you can tell, we should be okay there. We're going to clean this bowl out really good, we're going to clean the fuel transfer assembly really good, and then we're going to definitely clean this main jet here. Now I've got my <coughs> fuel transfer cleaned up pretty darn good. Now the stainage, you'll never get all that stains out of this white plastic. But I've cleaned the jet out. As you can tell, it's completely unblocked now. Both ends, good and clean. This part is okay. Now I'm gonna clean this bowl really well being careful not to lose the o-ring because I'm gonna have to reuse this one I don't have a replacement at this time and lastly we are going to clean the actual carburetor body itself the emulsion tube we need to be sure that all of the holes are not plugged up we need to clean this really well if you have to soak this portion in a ultrasonic cleaner that is fine just be sure you remove all of your rubber parts first and then we're going to blast our transfer ports here we're going to clean these with carb cleaner and compressed air just blow these holes out we're not going to worry about pulling the uh, welch plug at this time but Sometimes if you get it and it won't idle, you may have to actually pull the Welsh plug. This carburetor being as new as it is, I don't think we're gonna have a whole lot of dirt blockage. And usually dirt gets up in and behind this uh, Welsh plug and just stops everything up. But we're gonna try to save this carburetor. We don't wanna buy a new one that's brand new. But anyway, hey, let's go ahead and get this thing cleaned up and put back on and we'll see how it turns out. Now when you go to clean your emulsion tube, just be careful not to enlarge these holes. Just make sure that all of the transfer holes are clean and not plugged up. See that top one right there? It's plugged up. We need to clean that out. <clears throat> I apologize for the background noise. So what you wanna do, you wanna get, get a piece of wire just make sure those holes are clean and unobstructed. Catch this bottom hole right here and go all the way through. Just 
kind of rot it out. But like I said, you don't want to you don't want to enlarge these holes. This was the one that was stopped up. definitely clean this emulsion tube is a integral part of the carburetor it's not removable so that's the only drawback to these little Mickey carburetors is a lot of these parts you cannot remove to clean so whenever we go to put this on here we're going to line this inlet fuel inlet with the carburetor fuel inlet right here just get everything kind of lined up and slide it down wiggle 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 until it seats all right looks good now we're going to take our float bowl we're going to reinstall the float bowl there's no spring this o-ring right here in the very bottom fits around the emulsion tube and main jet right here. Slide it down and then we can attach our screws. Now, my, I call this the suck and blow. This is absolutely the easiest way to bench test a carburetor with it being in the position just like this. You should be able to suck and blow. If you invert the carburetor, you should be able to not blow and not suck. You can actually draw a vacuum on the fuel line here. And that means that the needle in the seat in the carburetor is working properly. Alrighty guys, hey, she's got good idle. She's got good wide open throttle. It's going to be good to go. I'm just going to slap the uh, blower shroud back on it and we're going to deliver it back to the customer and I think they'll be happy. Y'all have a good rest of your day. More Medic One.